Hello and welcome to the Sound of Science. Today I want to speak about a topic that is drawing a lot of attention in recent years and it's the interaction between the microbiome of our body and various uh, physiological systems in our body. Specifically the microbiome relates to viruses, uh, bacteria, fungi in different uh, organs of our body, for example the skin and the digestive system. And there is a great interest specifically in the interaction of this microbiome and our brain development. And indeed, several uh, studies in the past uh, several years showed there that there is an intimate link between the presence of the microbiome and brain development in embryos. The study that I want to discuss today uh, studied the involvement of the microbiome in the formation of the immune response in the brain. This study was conducted in the lab of Mina Clatworthy in the University of Cambridge and was published recently in the journal Nature. And so to understand this study, we need to know that underneath the skull, there is a region called the meninges. And the meninges itself is comprised of several layers. One is the dura mater, as you can see here, as well as the arachanoid and underneath it the pia mater. In between the arachanoid and the pia mater there is the CSF. Um, the meninges also is home to specific blood vessels and lymphatic vessels that were recently described by Jonathan Kipnis uh, lab. Also there is a dural venous sinuses. Within the meninges, there is a, a presence of innate immune cells as well as adaptive immune cells. And these cells include T cells, dendritic cells, mast cells, and meningeal macrophages and PL macrophages. So there is a heavy uh, a presence of immune related cells in the meninges. However, not much was known about the presence of a humoral immunity in the meninges, and specifically, we talk about the cells that. Uh, produce antibodies, so-called plasma cells and B cells. So to understand their role, we need to understand that B cells are formed in the bone marrow, which is a primary lymphoid uh, organ, and from there they migrate into secondary lymph lymphoid organs such as the lymph nodes as well as the spleen. And therefore, we are talking about B cells that express the B cell receptor. And these cells, under the relevant stimuli, can differentiate into plasma cells, which produce and secrete soluble antibodies. Antibodies come in different uh, shapes and forms and functions. Uh, for example, uh, of there are many uh, antibody types, but uh, here I'm depicting several antibody types that are secreted to the blood, such as uh, IgM, IgD, uh, and IgG. So IgM is uh, the first uh, type of antibody that is being produced against uh, a specific stimuli. And IgD, not much is known about it. However, IgG is, the, is known as the workhorse of the immune system. It is the most uh, potent uh, of uh, the soluble antibodies in the blood. Another antibody type called IgA is not secreted to the blood, but it's known to be secreted in mucosal areas, specifically the upper respiratory system as well as the gut. Now, the good old dogma that uh, pertains to the presence of uh, antibodies and antibody producing cells in the brain claimed that uh, first there is uh, immunoglobulins of the type of IgG for example in the blood and pending some sort of a breach of the blood brain barrier potentially through uh, some sort of a systemic inflammation caused by a pathogen these antibodies then can migrate into the CSF, the cerebral spine fluid, and from there penetrate the brain parenchyma. Um, however, in a, a recent paper uh, described that in multiple sclerosis patients there is a 
transfer of IgA producing plasma cells into, into the meninges. However, the current study aimed to study the role of uh, meningeal humoral immunity under steady state. So rather not on a, a context of a pathogen infection. And what the authors of this study found was that in blood vessels uh, within the meninges, they, f they saw the presence of naive B cells. So these are cells that mainly express IgM and IgD, as well as plasma cells that secrete IgA into their surrounding. And uh, what the authors found was that the presence of IgA secreting plasma cells uh, in the meninges uh, was dependent on the presence of microbes in the gut. How do they know that? What they, the authors did was they took animals and mice and treated them for six weeks with uh, antibiotics, as well as they took mice that are germ-free, so these mice do not have any kind of uh, pathogen on them, I should say any kind of uh, microbe on them, and they saw that in these uh, two different uh, mouse groups there was a significant reduction of IgA producing plasma cells. However, when the authors took these two groups of mice and reconstituted them with microbes, they saw an increase in IgA producing and secreting plasma cells in the meninges. Another uh, interesting observation that the authors made was that the ratio between IgG producing plasma cells and IgA producing plasma cells dependent on the variety of microbes uh, that inhabited the gut of the mice. Now the authors asked themselves whether the B cells that are present in the meninges first differentiated in the gut or that the B cells first migrated into the meninges and then differentiated into the final form. So in order to understand that we need to go through the development of B cells. So we mentioned that B cells uh, harbor or express the B cell receptor which is a form of antibody that is stuck on the, on the membrane. So the B cell receptor is comprised of uh, several genes, specifically the V, D, J, and C genes. And during the development of the B cells, the, each one of those genes, the V, D, and J, is being selected out of a um, variety of copies that are different from each other uh, and therefore one copy of a V gene, one copy of a D and J gene out of the entire uh, milieu of these genes are being selected combined with the C gene and this is uh, what will comprise the B cell receptor. This finalized form of the B cell receptor will then be present as soluble antibodies and produced by plasma cells. So what the authors did was they sequenced the RNA of B cells in the gut. They took one centimeter of the, uh, of the gut and sequenced the RNA of the B cells that they found in that uh, portion of tissue. And they also sequenced the B cell receptor of cells in the meninges of these mice. And what they found was that there was a 25% overlap between the sequences of B cell receptor in B cells from the gut and B cells from the meninges. And this suggested to the authors that uh, most of the B cells that are present in the meninges uh, are first differentiating in the gut and only then they migrate to the meninges. And therefore, to understand the role of these uh, uh, plasma cells, we need to understand that, for example, in the gut epithelium that you can see here in this scheme, there are plasma cells that secrete IgA. These IgAs are then secreted to the mucus layer of the gut, 
in order to serve as the first line of defense against pathogenic microbes that could otherwise penetrate into the gut epithelium. So a similar role is being played by plasma cells in the blood vessels of the meninges. Now the several of the blood of the main blood vessels in the meninges are very interesting. We're specifically talking about the superior sagittal sinus and the transverse sinuses. In these blood vessels there are no valves, so there isn't a particular a direction of flow of the blood, and the flow is slow relatively to other blood vessels. Now this fact allows bacteria that could um, flow in the circulation to better or more easily adhere to the blood vessels of the uh, meninges and from there to infect the brain. And what the authors saw was that when mice were infected with uh, Candida albicans, which is a common um, a pathogen in the human uh, gut, they saw that there was an increase in the presence of B cells as well as plasma cells in the sinuses of the meninges. However, when the authors took mice that are deficient for IgA, so they cannot generate IgA, and infected them with Candida albicans, they saw that there was a significant decrease in the production of B cells and plasma cells in the sinuses uh, in the meninges. Also, they saw that there was a significantly higher infectivity rate of uh, Candida albicans um, in the meninges, and accordingly, the mortality rates of these mice were significantly higher. And this is uh, very interesting and important because uh, the recent studies, for example, this paper for Journal of uh, Clinical Gastroenterology from May 2020 showed that people with inflammatory bowel diseases at a, are at a higher risk for meningitis. And what they specifically found was that individuals that have Crohn disease are uh, showing two and a half uh, fold higher susceptibility to meningitis compared to uh, individuals that do not have Crohn disease, and, in, and individuals with inflammatory bowel disease have a 1.6-fold higher uh, risk for meningitis compared to uh, non-sick individuals. This suggests that there is a great leakage of bacteria through the blood intestinal barrier. These bacteria flow through the circulation to the meninges and cause a higher rate of meningitis. So with that, I would like to conclude this uh, video and I hope you enjoyed and until the next video, stay safe.